please rise as you are able. Our service continues with the brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of our sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen us with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Our gathering hymn is hymn 248, People Look East. service continues on page 147. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth.
Let us pray. Stir up the will to all who look to you, Lord God, and strengthen our faith in your coming, that transformed by grace, we may walk in your way through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the reading. The first reading comes from Isaiah, chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with great, terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. Our psalm for today is Psalm 146. We will be reading uh, verses 5 through 10 by alternating whole verse. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who keeps promises forever. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed, and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphans and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God will sign throughout all generations. Hallelujah. The second reading is from James chapter 5, verses 7 through 10. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The Gospel reading for the third Sunday of Advent is from the 11th chapter of Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleaned, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. There was once a water carrier in India whose job it was to bring water from the river to his master's house. Day after day, he would take two pots that were attached to a long pole down to the river, and there he would fill them up and bring them back to his master's house. <clears throat> One day the water carrier stumbled and he, he fell. And when he fell, one of his water pots cracked a little. The water carrier continued on with his job of going down to the water, filling up his two pots and going back to his master's house. The difference now, however, was that by the time he returned to the house, the cracked pot was only half filled with water. One morning, the cracked pot spoke to the water carrier saying how useless it felt. The pot longed to go back to the days when it could bring back full contents. Since it couldn't, it asked the water carrier to simply break it on a rock and throw it on the trash pile. The water carrier saw how distressed the water pot was, so he told it to just relax that day. He wouldn't fill it with water, and it could simply enjoy the flowers along the way. Well, that didn't sit well with the water pot. And at the end of the day, it complained once again to the water carrier, saying how useless it felt and if it wasn't going to get used, just to get rid of it, smash it to pieces on a rock. When the water carrier asked the pot if it had seen the beautiful flowers along the way, the pot said it had, but it had nothing to do with it. The water carrier declared that, in fact, the pot had been very useful. He went on to explain that since his fall, he had noticed a, a trail of water behind him as he walked along the path. So one day he took some wildflower seeds and spread them along that side of the path. The cracked water pot had been watering the seeds all this time, and now there were some beautiful flowers 
that the water carrier could pick each and every day to put on his master's table. Now the obvious moral to this story is easy. No. Quit your complaining about the fact that you're a broken vessel and let God simply use you in the way that he will. Start appreciating that God is using you to water the faith lives of the flowers along the way. God does indeed use cracked pots like you and me to do his work among his people. For as useless as we might consider ourselves, God doesn't simply break us on a rock and throw us on the trash pot. That was the good news for the nation of Israel. And that's the good news for us. In our first reading from Isaiah, the nation of Israel had been beaten up. They had been conquered by Babylon and had been taken into exile. They were looking back on the days in Jerusalem and longing for the days of old. But it looked as though that would never happen. The people's hope was all dried up. There was a feeling among the people of desperate brokenness. Many were probably crying out, just break me on a rock and throw us on a garbage pile. So we don't have to continue to think of what we were before. In our lives, it looks like that sometimes too. We look back with fond memories at the way things and life used to be. We look back at the beginning of our relationships, at the beginning of our jobs, back to when our children listen to us or when others seem to understand us. We look back on what it used to be like in our church and we think to ourselves, if we could only go back to the way it was then. But we can't. Just as the prophet wrote to a scattered people who long for their homeland, we too are a people living fragmented lives in a fractured world. We're confronted with our own brokenness. We're confronted by things that we haven't done. We're confronted with things we haven't been faithful in. We're confronted with the crack in the side of our lives that has been making us half as useful as we were before. God comes in at that time with redemptive reversals that are dramatic and complete. In Isaiah, we see a transformed way through the wilderness. And that way is a sign of God's impending new age. When all that is less than whole is restored and made new. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the lame will leap, the mute will sing. The weak are given strength, the fearful given courage. Even nature will participate in the great reversals of God's new age of deliverance and hope. Broken creation becomes new creation. And the peace that God intended in creation becomes reality once again. The wilderness, normally characterized as a parched and dry wilderness, becomes a place of water and pools and streams. The barren and rocky desert becomes a land of marshes and swamps. And through this desert, 
there will be a remarkable highway where the redeemed people of God may travel in safety and confidence. During Isaiah's time, highways were lonely and, and desolate places. They weren't busy interstates like we have today, but rather they were dark roads where danger loomed around every corner. But this highway is unlike any other highway. It will be called the Holy Way and represents the way into a future for exiles who lacked confidence that the future was open or hopeful. God's coming signals a future for those who have given in to hopelessness and sorrow. In God, wilderness becomes not a journey of struggle, but of hope. It is this highway that God invites us to. It's not a place that we're going back to. It is instead a place that we have never seen before. It's a place onward. When Christ came into this world, he came into a place filled with sorrow and sin. He came into a place filled with dryness and desolation. And because of that, he lived out his life. He died on a cross, bringing life to others. He came to bring us something new. He came to bring us healing and wholeness. And we have a, a part to play, imperfect vessels that we are, in bringing that good news to a hurting people today. For there are people out there who will never be able to see the love of God unless they see it through you. There are people out there who are bent over and crippled because of damaged self-esteem and a, and a feeling of the lack of self-worth. They will never be able to straighten up unless you help them. There are people out there who will never be able to bear or to hear that God forgives them and accepts them unless they hear it from you. There are people out there who are like the walking dead, sealed in their tombs of misery. They might never be raised up to new life unless you extend your hand and your heart. And there are the poor and the poor in spirit and you might bear the only good news they'll ever know. God is leading us all forward to a new reality, to a fuller future joy. As we continue to live in this in-between time, as the prophet's people did, may we take heart. The promise in Isaiah is sure. God will come and save you. God will take us on our holy way toward home. And our mouths will be filled with no more sighing, only singing. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Our service continues with the Apostles' Creed, page 105. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me for the prayers of intercession, and your response will be here, I pray. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. Gracious God, we rejoice in the gifts of your spirit. Equip the global church to magnify your love and peace in every land. We pray for the work of the Lutheran World Federation, the ELCA Global Mission. God, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Abundant God, we rejoice in your creation. Review lands we have squandered and depleted. May gardens flourish in cities and neighborhoods. Cleanse polluted air and water so living things may breathe, drink, and praise you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Righteous God, we rejoice in your justice. End racism and oppression. Deliver all who are unjustly imprisoned or persecuted. Reconcile nations and people in conflict. Help us pray for our enemies. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we rejoice in your compassion. Comfort any in distress because of worry, illness, or loss. Strengthen and protect health care workers, rescue teams, crisis counselors, and all who risk themselves to keep others safe. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abiding God, we rejoice in your company. Give us calm and patient hearts as we gather with family and friends. Keep us mindful for those who this season is not happy. Console the grieving and surround them with loving support. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we rejoice with Mary, mother of our Lord, and with all the saints that your mercy endures for all generations. Look with favor on those who have died and lead us joyfully to sing your everlasting promises. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayer of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May be seated for the offering. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us that we, what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love 
through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Sending him is 267, Joy to the World. Peace serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We want to thank you for viewing our Sunday service. We have delayed video coverage on YouTube on our channel St. Paul NR. There are a lot of older videos of our church family on the YouTube channel. Check out our Facebook page at St. Paul NR. We accept an offering online, if you choose, on the tithe.ly website. Go to our webpage at stpaulnr.org and click on the Give button. If you want to join us in person, we are located in North Robinson, Ohio. The address is 2307 Main Street, which is State Route 602. We are six and a half miles from Galleon, Ohio and seven miles from Bucyrus, Ohio. Thank you again for joining us and we hopefully will see you again. <laughs>